Crime. Experts consider it to be the definition of wrongdoing. It is to these experts that this program is dedicated. Crime. Good evening. Most comic book stories involve the superhero, but this story is different. In fact, so different it may surprise you to death. For this is the story of a super villain. This is the tale of Brain Warp, the Baby Eater. <coughs> Chapter One: The Dumb Knight Rises. This is a tale that could only be told by a great storyteller, and so we now turn things over to a professional yarn spinner, Grandpa Wiggly. Take it away, Grandpa Wiggly. <laughs> Well, well, hello there. Welcome to Grandpa Wiggly's porch. <laughs> I don't get many visitors out this far in Magnet City, so it's a good thing you ran out of gas here. <laughs> now climb up on Grandpa Wiggly's knee, and I'll tell you all about Earth. I've been telling my story to all the children for years, and every single one of them has a moral. Like the one that says, every time you go to sleep, your parents love you less. Or, whenever you go to the bathroom, you lose part of your soul. It makes them think, like the tale I'm about to spin. All snuggled in? All right, then, here we go. It was 65 years ago today. It was, it was a cautiously, a cautiously peaceful, peaceful day in Magnet City, but the stench of crime hangs in the air. And in the studio apartment hideout of Brain Warp the Baby Eater, the world's stupidest super criminal, Brain Warp Tongue's evil plans. Ah, Brain Warp is here, fucking around in his apartment. Ah, ah Magnet City, you're all so... La Trocious. Ha! One of my words. When I think up a new crime, you'll all be up Dick River. Ha! Cause I'm the greatest villain who ever lived, and I'll prove it by talking shit. Ha! Who broke into Fort Knox just to get directions to Fort Knox? Ha! Who believes with all his heart that Iron Man 2 should have actually had more of Jon Favreau's shirtless character? Who dared to go to Comic-Con last year and steal all the spoiler alerts? Eh, no more questions. That's right, Brain Warp! Ha! Yeah, I unleashed the screams of a thousand Yodas that year. <laughs> and to all you punk-ass supervillains out there talking smack about me, Red Skull... Loki, Batmite, you're just jealous, because I got all this. Hey, hey, boss, boss. Well, if it isn't my rude henchman, La Foot. Huh. Boss, I've been lighting prayer candles all week. I think I found our next caper in the newspaper. And uh, look. Yeah? Hmm. <clears throat> One night only, boot fuck a midget. Ha! No, uh, down there. <sighs> Limited time only, Schmuckleberry Junction ice cream shoppy displays the world's most delicious ice cream sandwich. Ha! I don't have time for your boobishness. Can't you see I'm putting the finishing touches on my new weapon, the fistulator? Do you realize this will save us 35% on our punching? We'll live like kings. Ha! Last night, I dreamt the Virgin Mary wept for us. So far, your dreams are about as boring as stairs. <sighs> I can walk upstairs. Oh, yeah? Well, fuck you! <sighs> Bleh, I know you don't really mean it, boss. The hell I don't. You know how I know? Because I got henching in my blood. My father henched for the Penguin, the Green Goblin... And the Earth 2 Simon Bosch Sinister. What was your dad's name? Expositional? Uh, you just need to relax. Here, I'll put on some Tom Waits. Oh, great. I love gargling set to music. Look more on the bright side of things. Someday you'll be able to afford a better hideout. 
And someday, I just know you'll remember your secret origin. <gasps> Whoops. Sorry I mentioned it, boss. Huh? Life has been cruel to Brain Warp in many ways. His exposed radioactive brain, his asshole sense of fashion, but none are as embarrassing as the inability to remember his own secret origin. For it is written that every supervillain has the right to recount his personal story just before killing an arch nemesis. It's rudeness, pure and simple. Sorry, boss. Yeah, way to go. I need a pick-me-up. I think it's time I ate a baby. Need something to cheer me up. Fuck. Gee, do you have to, boss? Oh, what choice do I have? Joker has his jokes. Dr. Octopus has his gas. The good stuff was taken. Now... What's in the old fridge here? Huh? Uh, 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 a little drumstick. Perfect. <laughs> I'll just... <laughs> this baby tastes like cave. Huh? I need fresh babies to eat. I'm fucking famished over here. Could this day get any ruder? Wait... Wait, is it 4.30? <sighs> I can't stay. Uh, why not, boss? Because I have to go to my... part-time job. Yes, Brain Warp the Baby Eater is the only supervillain in the world who has a part-time job. And 15 minutes later, at the local supermart... Uh, uh, excuse me, young man, I have an, uh... I have an old voice. Can you can you tell me where is the... Over there. But you didn't hear what, what I was going to ask. Are you sure you're not just stupid? Well, I never. It shows, believe me. Ah. Uh, pardon me, young man. Do you know where the tire department is? If I did, do you think I'd be working in a place like this? What? S say, I don't like this kind of talk. So? Where's your manager? In the bathroom, taking a shit that looks exactly like you. What did you say? How the hell should I know? What, what's the name on your name tag, Sonny? Blaine Rapp. Let me tell you something, Blaine. I didn't come here to be treated like this. Uh, where do you normally go? Well, I... Uh, you make me frosty. Uh. And 18 hours later, after work... Ah, Hulk farts. <sighs> work and kiss my work. You know, I need to just go for a walk. Be by myself for a bit. Rethink the unthinkable. Yep. Time to walk. And 18 hours later, back at Brain Warp Studio Apartment Hideout. What a day. Welcome back, boss. Yeah. Finally, a moment free to netty tea some bath salts. <laughs> what the living fuck? Who's breaking in my door? Brain Warp. Oh, oh no. no! It's, it's the, the junky landlord! landlord. Uh, uh, uh. Where's the fucking rent? You're three months behind. I need that money for that next fix. I got this white fucking horse on my back, and I can't get it off. What are you going to do about it? 
you jag off. Uh, were we that loud? <laughs> Shut up. Uh, that's it, Brain Warp. I want the rent by this Friday or I'm taking up your floor. That guy is a trip. <laughs> we follow Brain Warp's junky landlord as he makes his way through the dilapidated apartment building on his way to a very mysterious rendezvous. Along the way, the junkie landlord takes the time to stop and check in with certain tenants, making sure their renting experience is to their complete satisfaction. Who the hell is it? <laughs> Hi, it's the landlord. How would you like to pay this month's rent? With a sexy predicament? Well, what do you say? Ew! <laughs> Gross! <laughs> you have a sexy cough. Did I mention I can play the theme to the sting on my balls? It's called The Entertainer. I've got the movies on fucking laser desk. Oh, asshole. Back in his own apartment, the junkie landlord has a secret conversation with a mysterious caller. Hello? Junkie landlord speaking. You did as I asked. Huh. Oh, it's you, yes. I I gave brain warp until this Friday to pay his fucking rent. He fucking owes me. Good. That it won't be long now. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> oh, asshole. Meanwhile, back at Brain Warp's apartment. <sighs> uh, what are we going to do now, Brain Warp? We'll never make rent by this Friday. We need a miracle. I know. I'll pray. <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven... Fuck God! I He's a dick! I've got it! Schmuckleberry Junction Ice Cream Shoppy is unveiling the world's most delicious ice cream sandwich. I'm going to steal... Hey! Hey! Uh, how are we gonna make rent? We're gonna steal! Uh, Shut the cunt up! Ow! And whatever you do, don't forget to call my best friend, the Stoolie. He's a real fan of mine, has to know everything I do. Okay, now let's get out there and show Magnet City what dicks we really are. Good, and on the way, I want to listen to our musical guest, Liam Lynch. Bah.
Call Captain Lunatic. Magnet City's number one cop surveys the city from the tenth floor of police headquarters, and he does not like what he sees. Goddamn condominiums! This freakazoid city! Nothing but dopers and street walking hookers! Jailbait hooked up on ice! Cab drivers sexting with opera singers! When will it cease? This magnet city is burning a hole in my soul so deep you could drive shit through it! Ah! God, I love the acoustics in this room! God damn you, brain wolf! God damn you to hell! Brain warp! The rube of robbery! The Satan of simpletons! The retard of roguery! He's out there on the city loose! Ever since he escaped Magnet City and Saint Prison disguised as piss! Oh, I lost a good cop that day! And all I have is this! My wall of references to calm me down! Good old wall of references! B. Arthur, you knew I only had two balls. Bite the bullet. I'm only five men. And you, Paul Michael Glazer, you look at me with your accusing eyes. Well, sit on it. Uh, don't they know I'm fighting to make the streets safe for love? Uh, uh, excuse me, Captain Lunatic, sir? What do you want, you motherfucking nerd? Uh... Don't kiss my ass, Potsy! Can't you see I'm busy? We got a tip on a robbery in progress at an ice cream shop. Ice cream? So the fuck what? Well... Wait a minute. Time out. I need a straight answer here. Who is it? Brain warp? Uh, no! Paul Michael Glazer! Sir! Brain warp! Brain warp! That's all I ever hear on this show. I want that turkey nabbed. The jive stops now. Yes, sir. I'm on it, sir. Don't you worry, sir. <laughs> the captain would blow a gasket if he knew I was in reality the green uniform. Yes, the green uniform. Scourge of the underworld. His uniform is all green. <laughs> I, I, I'll get the men ready, sir. Coolio, thanks. Mm. This kid would blow a gasket if he knew I knew he was secretly the green uniform. <laughs> I guess that's why I'm the cat with the stripes. Sir. Fucking A. We could sure use some help on this one. Wish we knew how to contact that green uniform. Oh, 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 oh the green uniform, hey? He's a righteous dude, and you can take that to the bank, brother. Hmm, could be tricky. Excuse me, Captain, I have to get some uh, 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 testicles from the closet. Sure, knock yourself out. Hmm. The Captain calling for the green uniform. True, I have amazing abilities as the green uniform, but let's not forget I'm also a good cop. Scratch that, I'm a great cop. Plus, let's face it, the cop uniform is a chick magnet. I mean, talk about fuck the police. <laughs> so, no need for the green uniform as far as I can see. Yet. Oh, uh, no testicles in there. Ah, you're back. S sir, with all due respect, what do you care about brain warp? I mean, is he dangerous? He's a one-man dumbass. Now listen up. The 50th anniversary of law is this week. The mayor don't want no baby eater busting up any sissy parades. Got it? Uh, yes, sir. Remember the code of Magnet City PD. Gas, grass, or ass. Nobody rides for free. Now let's roll. Excuse me, Captain Lunatic. What do you want, you motherfucking nerd? It's the musical guest. Family.
And now, the terrible conclusion to The Dumb Night Rises. I'm, I mean terrible. And later that night, outside the Smuckleberry Junction ice cream shoppy, Brain Warp puts his childish plan into operation. Ah, the back door's locked. Perfect. And now, in keeping with my M.O., I'll pull out this knife and... Knife? What are you doing, Brain Warp? Cutting off my hands. I don't want to leave fingerprints. Ah. Uh, how you gonna cut the other hand off? Mm. Ah, never mind. This is gonna be trickier than I thought, boys. Uh, what? Freeze! Everybody freeze! Hold it, Brain Warp! Captain Lunatic! I'm gonna blow your head off with this 357 Magnum! You'll have to kill me first. There's gonna be two hits. Me hitting you, and me hitting you. How rude. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm rubber and you're a whore. Anything you say bounces off me and fucks you in the ass. Ha! Get him, Lafoot! Uh, forgive me for the punches I am about to bestow. Ha <laughs> 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 ha! Now while that's going on, I will escape on my rocket marble! Ha! <laughs> rocket marble? Hey, he's jumping on that little marble. What the? He's lifting into the sky! I win! I'm the big winner! You lose, fuckface! Too bad, so sad! So long, lunatic! We'll meet again in heaven! Hey! No! You can run, but you can't hide, Brain Warp! Because wherever there's an innocent little baby being eaten, I'll be right there behind you to make you puke it out! But regardless, I'm happy to say the streets are once again safe for love! Okay, let's wrap it up here, boys. Shoot the henchman and let's go! Yes, sir! Be sure to eat the next exciting episode of Brain Warp the Baby Eater when we'll hear Brain Warp say... Hey, how do you stop this motherfucker? Somebody get me a big ladder! That was the Brain Whoop the Baby Eater Show, starring Eric Hoffman, Matt Walsh, Bill Cott, Scott Robinson, Neil Barton, and Jillian Vigman. Music composed and performed by David Adler. Additional music by Michael Burson. Script by Eric Hoffman. Engineered by Dustin Marshall. In conjunction with Faro Audio, a presentation of Deems Productions. And now, Comic Book Gossip Corner with Brain Warp. And here's Brain Warp. This is weird. Superman has a glasses face, in my opinion. And Clark Kent does it. Eh. The History of Music, Rock and Roll, Genius People. Chapter 8. The California Sound. When surf music first crashed upon the shores of America in the early 1960s, few people knew how to deal with its raging intensity. Songs about surfing and water were thought to be the work of the devil. Beers a bob with a sunburn and a coke! But music producer Artie Smitten didn't care if it was music from Satan. He just wanted a piece of the action. True, Artie had career ups and downs. At one point, he thought there were seven Beatles. But through it all, he has survived. Through his music company, Smitten House, he's released every type of record imaginable. Everything from novelty records like the Kiss My Ass song to his controversial 1960s rock opera, Naked Hippies, We Got Em. His most respected musical venture, and according to him, his biggest haul, was his association with the surf duo, the Moon Doggies.
times two equals hang ten. Five times two equals hang ten. Five times two equals hang ten. Five times two equals hang ten. Ah, they couldn't sing. Showbiz agent Artie Smitten. Jan and Hori Pismo, the Moon Doggies. Talk about a top-notch surf band. I remember these boys came to me so young their skin didn't have creases. Came to me and said they wanted a career. I said, hold it. What do you do? They said, first of all, we're brothers. I said, perfect. I got them every gig I could. Parades? Anyway, then I found out they played surf music. And when I found out they played surf music, I snapped on them like Burr Lives on a low blood sugar day. I said, boys, why didn't you tell me this before? I got right on the horn, and within five minutes, they were the number one surf duo in America. You remember the hits? Surfer Don't Drown, The Wrong Wave, and of course, The Fastest Car in the World. The Moon Doggies had their fingers on the pulse of the rumors of beach life. They didn't surf or even swim, but they made us believe that people who lived on the beach might look, act, and maybe even sing like that. The only people who knew any different were the surfers, the teenagers, and the car enthusiasts. As their star kept rising, I got them cameos in all the teen beach pictures. The only one they were ever directly paid for was Beach Blanket Grabass. Just like in every film, Jan got the girl and Hori played a Martian. Jan was the big brother. You understand. Ah, Jan. What's that you have there? This is the last picture of Jan taken before his tragic car accident. See, that's Jan at the beach driving off in his convertible. And that there's Hori shouting after him. Terrible business. He was paralyzed. I was heartbroken. I mean, dead I can work with, but a man in a wheelchair is like a three-record deal on acid. <laughs> on acid. Keep that bit in there. The kids will get it. Jan took the news of his paralysis so bad that he never walked again. He was confined to a wheelchair, which incidentally was my idea. Without a career, Hori went off and joined a drinking commune in Detroit so that he could find himself. From what I heard, he found he was an alcoholic. He woke up in a daze in Las Vegas, legally married to a shoe. After a costly divorce, Hori became a big hit of the lounge singer reenactment circuit. Then the inevitable happened. Jan talked Hori into a reunion concert at Perimeter Park in Magnet City. Oddity buffs, freak oglers, and rehash groupies alike showed up just to see what would happen. And now here's that infamous performance from Perimeter Park. Hi, we love you. Hey, everybody. We're the Moon Doggies. Yep. I'm Hori. You might know me from my... I better work with the lampshades. This is my brother, Jan. Hi, everybody. It's rock and roll uh, day. Now, you know this is going to be a great concert because my brother's drunk. That's hey. how I know. Hey, Hori, Hori, come on. Well? Don't take me there, Hori. Oh, get off it, you lazy motherfucker. Hey, come on. We don't fucking need this shit this right now, bullshit. man. This is not the time. You talk me and you not the time. Me and you oh, played you... and look at these people they paid. Yeah, you want to fight, Hori? You want to fight oh, a guy in a wheelchair? Ridiculous. Let's go, Space. right? Come on. You want to? All right, come on, you want bitch. a little bit of this? Come on. Come on. Get fucking go hey, Watch my wheelchair. Oh. Oh. Look. What are you doing to these poor people? Look at everybody. You come out here and you fall out of your wheelchair. Are you satisfied now? Give me the mic. Look. Look what this is come to. Give me the mic, kid. We should at least try this in my living room first. Give me the damn mic, Corey. There. there. You know, in a way, I'm glad this happened. 25 years ago, my brother and I were at the beach having a party, celebrating five songs in the top ten. That was the year of our hits like five times two equals hang ten and surfer sissy. Our manager, Artie Smitten, was throwing a little clam bake for us to celebrate, and we're all so excited we actually wrote a new hit in the sand. We were going to call it Clam Bake Party. But we never got the chance to record that song, did we, Hori? That's right, we didn't. I was ready to leave the party, go home, drive my Austin Healy Sprite with the top down. I was a little tipsy from the suntan lotion and the girls... But I remember before I left the party, my brother said to me, he said, whatever you do, Jan, don't drive through Dead Man's Curve tonight. Whatever you do, Jan, just please, please don't drive through Dead Man's Curve. Which, it's crazy, it's 12 miles out of my way, I wouldn't. But then I thought, what the hell, you know? 
We're at the top of our game. Surf music's gonna last forever. So I did. So I saw Dead Man's Curve about a half mile up the road. And the road was slick from suntan lotion. And girls. So I thought, I'll just bump it up to 85 and I'll, I'll be out of it no problem, you know? And it's coming closer and closer. And all of a sudden, there I was. Dead Man's Curve. <sighs> Actually, that was okay. It was the off-ramp that fucked me. All right, all right, that's another chin. Look at you, you really take the cake, just lay in there. I mean, you don't do anything, you just lay there. You don't paint with a brush between your teeth, you don't drive with your feet, you don't do anything. You know what, Jane, you're the worst kind of cripple. You're a lazy cripple. Ori, don't. But you're still my brother. And I will sing with you one more time. So, I'll get down here with you. That's my brother. That's my brother, Harry. Hit it, booby. Faster than your car. Fast as car. Faster than any car. Fast as car. The fastest car in the world. March. She drives a thousand miles an hour. Fast as car. She makes a stop sign cower. Fast as car. She's got a carbureted maxi tower. Fast as car. She's got a hundred million horsepower. Fast as car. My fastest, fastest car, she has what it takes, and here's one more thing. She ain't got no brakes. Faster than your car. Faster than any car. Faster than your car. 